First article today, guys, we got NBA, NAR, NAHB, that's National Association of Home Builders, call on the Fed to provide market certainty about its rate path. Yeah. These are the three largest entities out there association representing realtors, lenders, and home builders. Mm -hmm. Well, here's the thing. The backstory here for everyone who is new to this either topic or new to this show is that the National Association of Realtors, the Mortgage Bankers Association, and the National Association of Home Builders uh, collectively represent what they call shelter space, right? Uh, including like renting and that kind of thing. Yeah. You know, shelter uh, costs account for more than 50% of inflation that's measured. And then when the uh, when the economists and the Fed have to strip out food, energy, and, uh, and shelter from their inflation numbers, it gives a very skewed perspective on what we're actually dealing with as consumers because it's removing the biggest part of what contributes towards inflation measurement. Uh, so these three groups uh, coming together to make this kind of front-facing public statement is a big deal. I don't want to Absolutely. overlook how big of a deal this is uh, because they are also then saying that the headwinds facing the market and facing the consumers are not only tangible, but they're worrisome. Yeah, absolutely. But Andy, even though these are like the three biggest organizations coming forward and making this statement, uh, you know, you mentioned a couple of things like food, housing and shelter that the Fed's taken into account. I mean, the Fed just can't just not raise rates if they need to, right? Well, it, it's a function. There's again, there's things that the Fed can control and things the Fed cannot. Mm -hmm. So there's things where they entry in the, when they increase increase the Fed funds rate, it directly impacts certain things, right? Credit, credit cards, yeah. car loans, that kind of thing. Uh, variable variable rates that are tied to the Fed funds rate and prime rate. But then there's things that are indirectly affected. Their 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 monetary policy and their position and their stance changes the way people will trade in certain markets, like yeah. the mortgage backed security market, ten year yields, that kind of thing. Um, th th I think the general consensus yeah. here is that the market uncertainty is what they're really concerned about, and the market uncertainty is now is bleeding into all levels of actual real estate professions, but even into the consumer side way more than maybe intended at the beginning. Absolutely. I mean, they're calling on the Fed, like, please let us know what you guys are really going to do out there. Because it seems like there's just so much uncertainty out there where we just got to give a break to the consumer, right? We got to give a break to everything that's going on and say, like, please tell us where we're at, where we're going to be at. Just give us something up front. Be transparent with us. Yeah. And I think on the surface, you go, OK, that's three agencies. They are like the three of the largest mm -hmm. agencies or, or I just say groups that are associations connected with real estate. And I mean, to come out and kind of plead in this fashion yeah. really does represent what we are seeing on the on the front lines of this and when it comes to real estate i mean you have lack of inventory interest rates fixed yeah. rates the highest that they've been in you know what uh, over two decades uh, since the early 2000s um you know we've made reference to that mm -hmm. you have uh, affordability being crunched you have rents that are staying high stubbornly high so there's more things that are working against the first-time home buyer yeah. than there are working for the first-time home buyer yeah. i mean these and, are powerful Entities out here, and, and that's going to very show. influential. <laughs> very influential. Well, their their whole their whole thing is like we need to get. We want to try to like administratively. They want to see more people become home buyers yeah. and homeowners, and that's why you know we serve, every once in a while we talk about the uh, percentage of home ownership, and you notice how that's like not being talked about right now. <laughs> They're not talking about it because it's going lower and lower, and more and more people are becoming renters yeah. because they have to be. Yeah, exactly. As <laughs> as a result of number of people who can't afford to buy a home has definitely, definitely declined. Yeah. Well, then what do you think they're going to think when they see that policies make policymakers, you know, they want to have one more hike by the end of the year? What do you think they're going to think about that? Less affordability. Less yeah. affordability. Well, I mean, <laughs> Ding. But they have to. I mean, again, they're kind of like it's, you know, that saying, guys, like you have to make the bed uh, or sleep in the bed you make. Yeah. Um, you know, or you make the bed you sleep in. Yeah. Like, whatever. However that term yeah. goes. Make the, your bed. The, the, the point is they're going to have to deal with the consequences of their decision. You know, this this whole thing about we got to get back to 2% inflation is honestly, from Andy's seat, a pipe dream. Yeah. It is 100% a pipe dream. Now, I was not an advocate that they should adjust their number upwards, their target upwards to three or three and a half. But but honestly, it's probably going to have to only become that unless there's like a complete catastrophic bottom bottoming yeah. out of everything, because yeah. otherwise there's nothing driving inflation back down. Back to your question, Mikey, your point about the Fed and what they influence is like they, they, they are not influencing directly oil prices. Yeah. So when crude oil goes up and that just gets passed through, you're starting to see this in things like the PPI, the producer price index that yeah. is once again positive and higher than expected. So those things end up making it to the shelf. You go buy that product that upstream was on a truck and that truck mm -hmm. had to be filled with diesel and that diesel had to be made and refined like with, with oil. Those things the Fed's not in control of, yeah. but they're fighting against those things all the time 
because those costs would make their way into the pipeline of the yeah, system. Yeah, exactly, exactly. One of the things they can control is what they're selling off in mortgage-backed security, and that has a huge effect. That's true. Right, Andy? So yeah. why is it important for the Fed not to sell off our mortgage-backed securities? Well, it's just, it's a, so the, the easiest way to explain it is it's, it's transfer of risk. So if you're gonna have something on your, your profit and loss or your personal budget or your monthly, and you transfer that off of you and it comes on to me, now I absorb that as the market. And so the market does not need that right yeah. now. You know, the, the Fed did us a favor in 2020, 21, and even they a little bit of 22 by buying mortgage-backed securities and aiding in implementing low rates yeah but now rolling that off is like confirming okay well these higher rates are gonna be elevated for longer and also we're gonna reduce our risk and put that back onto the market yeah back in the day Mikey to give perspective they were purchasing and correct me if I'm wrong but an average of 80 billion dollars a month a month yeah yeah it so, was, and what are they purchasing uh, now well, nothing. Nothing. Well, they I don't know that. if it's nothing, but they're not purchasing mortgage well, they backed did, securities. They did <laughs> like just taper down and say, we really can't afford to buy, keep continue buying. That's why yeah. the rates were so low. They were that's why they were in the twos, you know, back it, in the day. It's the equivalent when you know when you were online, you're hearing people say, Oh, the Fed's just printing money. Yeah. That, that's their that's their short way of saying this is the equivalent of the Fed printing money, is they're mm. making it so cheap and they're participating yeah. in the mortgage backed security market, which made this big basket of money available for, for people to lend out. Gotcha, gotcha. So where there was a lot of money so when there's a lot of something, it costs a lot less. When yeah. there's very there's scarcity of something, it costs more. So by them removing it from their balance sheet, it creates more scarcity of money in the mortgage backed security market, but also it's a transfer of risk as well. Yeah. That's why hold so on things happening to those mortgage backed securities <laughs> yeah. that we have, please. So, uh, you know, these housing groups are urging Jerome Powell and the Fed to make two clear statements that, number one, the Fed does not contemplate future further rate hikes. I don't think he can commit to that. Mm -mm. Uh, we'll come back to that. Number two, the Fed will not sell off any of its mortgage backed security holdings until and unless the housing finance market is stabilized and mortgage to treasury spreads have normalized. Again, these are things that they may want their voice to influence, but the, but the Fed keeps coming back to us and telling that it's the it's the data they're being data driven. It's the data, mm -hmm. it's the information yeah. that's going to dictate their decisions because they are tasked and charged with price stability, getting inflation back to two percent, maximum unemployment. But there's going to be uh, there's going to be factors that are not going to be playing well. Nice. Yeah. They're not going to not everyone's playing nice in the sandbox, yeah. if you will. All I'm saying is, Fed, please <clears throat> stop. You know, start reducing the stress, anxiety yeah. for us home yeah, buyers, seriously. please. <laughs> yeah. So you know they're. They're projecting on their dot plot chart. For those of you who've never seen a dot plot chart, it's basically a graph that shows where the Fed members who are uh, uh, who are projecting where they think the Fed rates are going to be for the rest of this yeah. year into 24, 25, 26. Uh, and they are, some of them are foreseeing that there is one more rate hike. It depends heavily on inflation numbers and on jobs data. Uh, their words, not mine. So comment box, take it easy. Well, I didn't in, say it, they in, did. In my words, I feel pretty confident, you know, that might happen. Yeah, if it's not in the oh, November yeah. meeting, it'll probably be in December. They're, but again, I'm going to make a point I made a couple shows ago. If you knew it then in September, why didn't you do it then? Exactly. So if you yeah. knew it in September, why'd you wait till November or December? We're going to have to wait and see. But I, I think they're getting their they're they're getting their they're being their arm their arm being twisted behind them. They're going to have to do something again. If that's their solution for how to fight inflation, they've been doing this now for a year and a half. Mm -hmm. What are they going to say? Oh, we have a new we have a new method now. They that's don't. Right. They it's don't been, have a new method. Been more than a year and a half. March of yeah, 2022. March 2022. Crazy. Yeah. Yep. So, um, you know, and so alongside with this, we have the 10 year yield, which is now in this new range of four and a half to 4.75. Uh, again, for you, those of you who are new to the show, mortgage rates, 10 year yield, they actually they actually track with one another very yeah. closely. And the last time we'd seen this rate of the 10 year yields or this price, the 10 yield was back in 2007. Yeah, 2007. Crazy. So it's been a long time since we've seen that. Um, and it's not just high prices we have with real estate and with all that. It, it's just it's just the inflated prices that are yeah. that are staying in place that are now taxing America. Americans yeah. uh, at every level. I mean, the other thing that's just super crazy, right? Back in the day, the banks for many, many years were borrowing from the Fed at 0%. That's right. You know, yep. and yeah. Wait, when, when was that? Oh my God, that was 0%? Since the Fed's been at zero. Increased. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Since it was at they, zero in March of 2022 when they started increasing the Fed funds rate. Oh, wow. So in that just short amount of time, it's gone to a historical high yep. never seen before. Yeah, it's it's acceleration of going to this this uh, this right now, this five and a quarter, five and a half. This is the fastest it's gotten there yeah. in, in recorded history. And that's why we're seeing the rates higher, right? <laughs> when the Fed is giving you money to loan at zero, yeah. well, there's no reason for you to 
land it up that high Mm because it's like most other people you got to stay competitive within the market range right. yeah otherwise no one's buying from you or right. oh yeah or borrowing from well, you it's, right it's, mm-hmm. it's simple math if you can borrow the money at zero percent and and then you can lend it out at three you're making an arbitrage of three percent yeah so sim, same if you got a 10-year yield or 10-year note at four and a half percent and you're charging seven and a half you're making a three-year arbitrage a three percent uh three year three percent arbitrage yeah, yeah i see what yeah. you're saying so when the fed is like ticking up and up and up and up that's why all these borrowing costs keep going up yeah. but then that tempers borrowing because i don't want to borrow at a 10 percent rate for a car loan i don't want a credit yeah. card at 29.99 you know jesus christ a 10 percent car loan would be insane i remember <laughs> i went to go apply for a car loan um like sometime last year and they approved me for up to like thirty five thousand dollars. and the, with my credit the rate was like Four and a four and three quarters, so oh. still pretty low. Yeah, but I mean, sure, if I went back now, I'd be in the eights or something. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I wouldn't even bother yeah. to buy a car. <laughs> yeah, especially used cars. Yeah, yeah. cost you more money. So we'll we'll see what they do. I mean, look, there's no obligation for the Fed or Drone Powell or anyone to 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 really um, you know cave to the NBA, NAR, and NHB's yeah. requests. But I mean, certainly, I mean, this hit actually the national news. This wasn't just like us in real estate and mortgage who heard this. Like this is it, the 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 pinnacle of yeah. association leaders. Uh, uh, making some waves and at least at least publicizing their concern. So we're gonna have to keep one eye on that, guys. Yeah, and even after seeing these three most influential associations, you know, pretty much the uh, the the Fed is already saying they're gonna stay strict with the policy. It's yeah. gonna stay in place until in, yeah. until inflation well, eases. Well, I mean, if they're truly data driven, like what other choice do they have, really? Yeah, that's the point. Yep.